Welcome to Vineyard Church Online. My name is Andy Mead. I'm so glad that you're joining us as we conclude the last message of the series, The Great Comeback. We've been looking at some amazing comebacks from some pretty disheartening setbacks. We can all relate to that. We've all been in a place where we've had a setback. We need a huge comeback. Some of you are in that place. And And so I'm glad you're joining us because today we're going to be talking specifically about how to have a comeback from your business. You might say, well, I don't own a business. Well, any work that you have or really uh, anything that you want to apply this to, certainly there's life lessons from it. But specifically, the one we're looking at today is about uh, a business comeback. Jesus intervened with some business partners. They were in a terrible situation. And, uh, and Jesus helps them out. So it's a fantastic story, amazing. It's found in Luke 5. You can follow along uh, with your Bible if you have that with you. Uh, certainly we have the text that we'll have here on the screen as well. But in Luke 5 is Jesus' second miracle. His first miracle was the, uh, turning the, the uh, water into wine at Cana. Uh, But here, this is his first miracle that really he doesn't have any disciples. He's calling his very first disciples. And these are four guys that are all business partners. And uh, they're they're fishermen. They have a fishing business. It's, uh, it's, It's Peter. It's Andrew. It's James. It's John. And they are, like I said, they're in partnership together. And the story, though, let me set the backdrop for you, is that they've been out on the lake. This is Lake, uh, the Sea of Galilee or Lake Galilee. It's also called uh, the uh, Lake Gennesaret or, the, or Lake Tiberias. It has different names. It's a large, large lake. That's why it's also called the sea, much, much larger than something like Lake Gaston or something like that. It's probably five times the size of that. And, uh, and, and so these guys are, are fishing all night long. They're pros they fish for 10 hours straight. They show up with nothing. They don't have anything in their boat. They're tired. They're discouraged. They're exhausted. And that's when we drop into this story. It says, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, that's the Sea of Galilee, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. So he's got a, a group of people that he is speaking to. And then he decides to use uh, one of these guys' boats, Simon Peter's boat. He saw the water's edge. Uh, uh, there was two boats there, left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. So they were washing the nets. They didn't catch anything, though. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. So here he is. He's, he's using one of, uh, one of these guys' boats. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Well, they've already been out there for 10 hours. They're the pros. Uh, So this kind of catches them off guard. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. That's a key phrase. We'll come back to that. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So this is an amazing, amazing fish story. I mean, we've all heard fish stories. This is the ultimate fish story. So they signal their partners, who are James and John, in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. So you'll never have a better fishing story than this one. I mean, fish stories, often, you know, people exaggerate. The fish get bigger every time they tell the story. But this is a miracle. Here they are, they're in a difficult, I mean, it's just a terrible spot. Uh, the lake is in recession. There's no jobs to be had. I mean, there's, you know, there's just, nothing's happening. Now, you say, well, I'm not a fisherman. But the story applies to any area in our life. We're all fishing for something. Some of us want significance. We want to uh, feel like we're making a difference. I think that's probably everybody. I mean, some people, they, they're, they're looking for Uh, you know, happiness in their life, or they're looking for a job, or they're looking for a mate, or they're looking for a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or whatever you're looking for, we're going to be able to pull the principles how to go from emptiness into fullness, how to let God come in and help transform whatever setback, 
whatever situation you find yourself in. In fact, this is really a miracle of acceleration. And what I mean by that is God can do more in 10 minutes than what we can do in 10 hours. We can just spend, or 10 years for that matter. I mean, we can do whatever we spend in our own effort and, and find ourselves coming up way short than what God can do in a fraction of the time. And here's the point of this. When you start to realize that God is in charge of this acceleration, he can do whatever he wants in a fraction of the time, you, you start to not be concerned about timing anymore. Timing is all when we think God has to work in our time frame and the measures we think that he has. You have this amount of time, God. But when, when we start to see God can do whatever he wants, and the time frame he has, we start, to, we start to not worry about that anymore. And so God does this amazing miracle. Jesus does an incredible miracle. So let's look at some of the things. You know, it's interesting now when he does speak from the boat, one of the reasons he does that is because he, uh, they didn't have amplification back then. And so his voice would be heard a lot better. And so, you know, if you've ever uh, shouted to somebody across a calm lake or something, you know that, the, that it just carries way further. So part of it's communication. But another part of it is these guys were fishermen. These were going to be his disciples. He is going to call them to follow him. And what better way to do that than a miracle that they under that's right in their domain. I mean, it's a fish miracle for fishermen. So that's why Jesus does that. What do you do when you've had a business setback? Let's look at. We're going to see four things from the story that whatever setback you're in, whatever life circumstance, you can apply this. But specifically in your work, or if you have a business, Jesus give Jesus complete access to my business. This is uh, something that they did. They let Jesus get into the boat. I mean, it says he stepped into it, but they were right there. They're washing their nets. They see it. Inviting Jesus into uh, your boat. What is a boat? Well, a boat is how you make a living. It's whatever you do, whatever you do in order to make a living. That's your boat and inviting Jesus into that. You go, well, hey, I'm having a hard time making a sale. I'm having a hard time, you know, closing the deal. I'm having a hard time, uh, you know, uh, getting clients or whatever it is. That's your boat. And the principle here is, is inviting Jesus into your boat. So you're not just doing it in your own strength, in your own efforts. You're letting Jesus into your boat and letting a miracle transform because it will happen. If you let Jesus in, if you say, if you say hey, I'm going to give you complete access to my business, to my work, to my school, whatever I'm doing, and it's a game changer. Notice in the story that we just read, it says Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, asked him to put out for a little from the shore, and then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And so having him in your boat, whatever I do in order to make a living. What does it mean to have Jesus in my boat? Well, it's real simple. To dedicate my career, my business, my job, my work, whatever it is, to God, to dedicate that to God. I remember when I was decided to go to college. I went to college because both my parents were college graduates. I thought, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. I did really poor. I, I, I did poorly. I either got, you know, I was getting C's. Sometimes I got D's, even some E's. I mean, I just, I got a couple B's. I don't think I got any A's. I mean, I just wasn't, I was distra- I wasn't focused. I didn't know why I was there. I, I was just, I was doing my own, doing it all on my own effort. I was, thought I was going to be a business major. I, that made sense. I'd open up my own business, start my own business. But then I had a God encounter and I felt like God wanted me to invite him into my boat at that time. God, you, I want you in my boat, which was at that time was school. And I said, God, what do you want me to study? And I felt like God gave me a, a, a direction change in my, in, in my course load and in my major. And from then on, I got nearly straight A's. It wasn't that I was smarter or anything miraculous happened in the sense of what I was doing. 
The miracle happened because I invited Jesus into the whole situation. And it was a game changer for me. All of a sudden, I had purpose. I had clarity. I sensed God with me. God did help me in a number of amazing circumstances in uh, aligning uh, certain people up that I could study with and, and some, some fantastic uh, ways that I learned how to memorize better, uh, my clarity and, and test taking. I mean, just, there was a number of things that happened it, because I invited Jesus into my boat. I said, God, I want you into this. And so really it's the question you have to ask, what do you want God to bless in your life? Because regardless of whether you own a business or not, you might be a student like I was, you might be doing something else, you might be single and you want to be married or, or you need help with uh, raising your kids or whatever it is, but whatever you want God to bless, you put him first in that area is the principle of that. You want him first in your schedule and how you uh, do your, well, then you got to make sure you put him first in your, in your life. So when you get up in your, in your, in your schedule, you, he gets the first part of that. First 10, 15 minutes of every day, you spend some time and some Bible reading and, and, and praying and you're putting him first there. You want him to bless your finances, then you put him first in your money. And the Bible calls that tithing. You give to God first and you say, God, I want you to bless that. But it's really a principle of whatever. You want him to bless your marriage. Then make sure he's in your marriage. You're inviting him into that boat, into that place in your life. And you say, God, I, I want your blessing on my relationship with my spouse. And so I, wanna, you, I want you to be part of that and invite him into that. So this is the principle. But listen, when you do that, it really is a game changer. Uh, 30, a little over 30 years ago, I was in Arizona, and I had never pastored before. I had no money. I had no, no, no people. I had really I, I, no training. I felt like God called me to plant a church. I, I, didn't, I barely even knew what that meant. Uh, and so I came out to Virginia Beach. I didn't know anybody. I ended up meeting Sharon. We ended up planting a church here. And, uh, and, but that's a recipe for like, like total failure. Yeah, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no money, no, no, no people, but it was what God wanted me to do. Doing what God wanted me to do made all the difference. And it, it I'm so glad I, I took that adventure with him. And so letting God into your boat, letting him bless you. And it changed my life. It changed a lot of other people's lives. The fact that I followed God. And the second thing is, is admit my efforts are not working. Admit. So that can be difficult because most of us don't like to admit our mistakes, don't like to admit when we're not doing well. But that's an important part. And we see that here in this story. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. These guys are pros. They've been out for 10 hours working, slaving, making it, giving their very best, and they don't even catch one fish. I mean, that's like LeBron James playing a whole game and not getting one basket. It's unheard of. And so they have to own up to that. that these, these guys are pros, and, uh, and, and they're not amateurs. They know what they're doing. They've been fishing their whole lives. They're experts at it, and they somehow end up with zero fish. The lake is as I said earlier, in recession, it's, it's, there's no jobs. We had no sales to be, I mean, it just, it does not look good. And so they have to own up to that, but that's part of that. They say, Hey, I, on my own, in my own effort, I can only get so far. Now here's what we have to be willing to ask is, is what keeps us from owning up to our own lack, our own failures, our own mistakes? Well, one is obviously pride. You know, and is that, is that what you're, you know, where we just say, I, I don't want to, I'm worried about what people will think of me. You know, my perception is more important than, you know, being honest with, with God and, 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 and with myself and even with others. And so pride can be a sticking point. That's a sticking point for a lot of people. That could have been that situation for, for Peter, but he, he doesn't let that get him. Another one would be stubbornness. We just don't want to... Uh, to go there, we're, we're stubborn, we're obstinate, or fear. 
you know, again, what will people think of me? Uh, I don't want people to think I'm a failure. I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fear. Fear is certainly one of those factors. So these things get in the way of us being honest. Three is, is do whatever Jesus tells me to do. This is key. In other words, whatever Jesus tells me to do, I'm going to do it. Now, sometimes when God gives us instructions, it doesn't make sense. Sometimes it seems odd. It might seem foolish. It might seem uh, stupid. I mean, just it, it won't ca- calculate. I mean, it, when we think of, for example, money, when God says, oh, I want you to put me first in your money, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Oh, I, you know, and mathematically, I now have less. But that's not calculating in the God factor, where God does m- the miraculous, he, the divine intervention that God does. Same thing with time. If I just gave God, if I'm real busy and I give him, I need blessing in my time and I give him 10, 15 minutes of my time, I now have 15 minutes less of time. Well, that's, again, that's, it may not seem to make sense logically, but it's God economy is what I like to call it. It's it's the way God works and doing what Jesus tells me to do. He says, hey, I want you to do that. That's what uh, Peter did. Simon's his other name, right? Simon Peter. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night. And haven't caught anything. Here's the key phrase. But because you say so, because you say so, I will let down the nets. And so we do it because, G- because he says so. Notice he doesn't argue with Jesus. He could have said that, hey, you know all about carpentry, but I know all about fishing. And you have no idea what you're talking about. He also doesn't say, hey, I'm exhausted. I've been in this for 10 hours. Um, I love your idea. Let's come back next tomorrow around this time. But I'm going to, we're sweaty. We're exhausted. Uh, we haven't seen our wives. We haven't eaten. Uh, you know, I mean, he didn't come up with a bunch of excuses. He says, no, I'm, I'm going to do it. Because you say so, I'm going to do it. Regardless of if it makes sense, regardless of if it's inconvenient timing. So that's one of the things I love that Peter does here. And certainly we can draw from this story because when Jesus says to do it, we just do it. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus. What has God told you to do that you still haven't done? I mean, some of you, God's already given you a word. He's already spoken to you. You know you're supposed to go a particular direction and you haven't done it. Well, if you want God's blessing in your life, then the phrase that you need to have resonating, we all, as followers of Christ, need this resonating in our heart, is because Jesus said so, I do. I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to argue with them. I'm not going to rant and rave. I'm not going to procrastinate because you say so. He does it right away, right away. Now, whenever God gives you uh, a word or a vision, uh, then it's going to come in three parts. Notice he gives him clarity on when. He goes, I want you to do it now. Not tomorrow, not next week. Now, I want you to go out, to launch out. And when we launch, that's always risk-taking. What let down your nets? He says, I want you to put your nets in the water. I know they've been in there. I know you just clean them. But I want them back in the water. And then the where? Into the deep. So he says, I want you to go into the deep water. He gives them clear instruction. Why? Because that's where the fish are. That's where the big fish fish are you know it's funny if you go to Israel today they it's the the common fish that they think that Peter caught was tilapia Uh, and the tilapia that's in the lake today is generally small somewhat scrawny very bony not a lot of meat and so there's uh, when you go there they call it St. Peter's fish which is just tilapia uh, if you eat uh, at any of the restaurants in the northern Galilee area where, where this all happened. Uh, but they also say, they usually make a joke, well, Peter must have been pretty thin because he couldn't get uh, very much meat off of this. Uh, but the truth is that when Jesus has them go out deep, they're catching the big ones, not the little bony ones that have no meat on them. That's where the big stuff happens. Now, the problem is, So often we don't want to go deep. There's a lot of Christians that just, they go shallow. They they want to be in the shallow. They're like, you know, like if you go to the beach, they're kind of like the grommet Christians. You know, they just want the baby uh, size. They they just stay up into their knees and they don't, or maybe their waist. They don't want to go deep. 
because it's risky to go deep, to go in there deep. But that's where the bigger fish are. In fact, the truth is the greater risk is to stay shallow with Christ, to keep him at a distance, to not invite him into your boat, to not uh, admit that things aren't working and saying, I'm going to do whatever you have me to do, because that's where the great blessing happens. That's the great risk that you'll miss out on all the blessing that God has for you if you stay shallow, but God wants you to go deep. And then number four, expect Jesus to turn things around. There is a, this is the faith factor. There is a part where Jesus says, according to your faith, it'll be done unto you. There's kind of an expectation. And I think Peter was right there. I mean, he's even, he obeys Jesus. He says, I'm going to do it. But I think he's just quivering with excitement. What's going to happen? Something amazing is going to happen. Because when we start to follow God, it's, it happens. God starts to open up doors. Uh, the winds shift. Things change. That certainly happened in this story. When they had done so, what did they do? Well, they, they followed Jesus. Jesus said, I want you to go out. I want you to launch out. I want you to put your nets in. I want you to put them in where it's the deep water. They're doing what Jesus said. And so the, when, you, when you do what Jesus says, you can expect a miracle says they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. And now that's a major miracle. I mean, that's a big fish story. I mean, nobody's going to match that. And in fact, they have so much that it's beyond what they can do for them. They can have for themselves. They need to call over other people. Other people get blessed from their obedience, from them inviting Jesus into their boat. From them saying, hey, I can't do it on my own. I'm going to do, because you say so, I will. Other people get blessed. So they call them over. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, both boats, so that they began to sink. So they didn't just bless a little bit of other people. There was a major blessing on other people because of what Peter and Andrew did. Uh, Peter's reaction, when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am sinful man. See, what he's recognizing is, is that, you know, that this is a huge God experience here that's happening. It's way beyond just fish. God's intersecting his life in a powerful way. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. So they were business partners. And this, there's this huge, huge uh, miracle that happens. But here's the real lesson. The real lesson is, then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. You see, the real lesson was not even about God blessing their business. He did bless their business in a major way. I mean, they certainly could have just laid back on their laurels and said, wow, we, we've got enough fish for the rest of the year or maybe a couple years. I mean, we've got, you know, we, they, this changed everything and, and we've got this huge blessing. But instead, God's actually changing their purpose, giving them clarity about purpose. Hey, there's something bigger than just fish. God just showed up in a powerful way and there's more to come. There's more to come. From now on, you will fish for people. That's the purpose that he gives them. So they pulled up their boats on the shore and they left everything and followed them. Him. He, he, they could have just said, well, we're going to retire now or we're going we're to start franchising or all of that. that th- there's nothing wrong with enjoying the blessings that God gave us, gives us. But I want to just point out, they got the big picture here. See, the big picture is not the blessing it's the blesser. They realize that, hey, we can, we can just enjoy this one blessing or we can follow the blesser and then there'll be a lifetime of blessing that comes. And that's the great lesson when, God, when we start to recognize that whatever we do in our, with our life, with our career, with our job, that ultimately our, God's calling us to be fishing for people. That it's not just the sail. And so we're really a missionary in disguise. That's, what a, that's really what a Christian is, is a missionary in disguise as a realtor. A missionary in disguise as a nurse. A missionary, a missionary in disguise as a CEO. Or all these kinds of jo- jobs or a, a homemaker or whatever that 
we, God's called us to, uh, to something bigger, to something bigger. And God's calling you to something bigger. I want to challenge you through this story as we close up this series on the great comeback. Here's what I think God's saying to some of you. Which is Jesus calling you to do? Number one, is Jesus calling me to leave my job, to serve him full time? I think some of you are. We have people on our staff here that have worked for uh, billion dollar companies. They've given up big salaries. They come, they work for a pittance of what they could have gotten or did get in, uh, in the corporate world or in the marketplace because they felt like God's calling them. And God's calling some of you to be full time Maybe at this church, maybe somewhere else, but God's calling you full-time to work for him. Others of you, Jesus is calling you to start using your job as a platform to share the message of Christ, the message of hope. Uh, Before you were just, you separated them. Maybe you were told to separate them. Listen, there is something bigger uh, that we march to, a different drum, a different beat. God's given us kingdom, a kingdom mandate that we are to be fishing for people, fishing for souls. And so always looking for an opportunity. We need to be winsome. We need to be careful. We need to be clever. We need to, you know, Jesus talks about being uh, smart, like, you know, like the world smart in some ways, but, but, but not getting caught up in the world's ways. But, we also, but we're also very, very cognizant of, of, uh, of our surroundings. But it never changes that you are a missionary in disguise as whatever you do, whatever you do. And so that's the big picture of this story. That's what I certainly hope that you get from this story and that I want to pray and that you ask yourself, which one of these is God calling me to do? Let's pray. Father, right now, we just want to come to you, Lord, and say, Lord, come into our boat. I mean, that's the first step. If you've not done that, you just say, God, I want, to, I want you to come into my boat. This is not salvation. You can, you can have Jesus in your life, but not in your boat. You can have Jesus in your life where you've asked Christ, you, you said, yeah, I want, to, I want to follow you, Christ, but he's, he, you haven't let him into your business, into your work. This is inviting Jesus into your boat. That's what begins there, where you say, Jesus, I, I invite you. I want you to have complete access into my work, into my business. You say, God, my own efforts are only going to get so far. In some cases, they're not working at all. And you just need to say, God, I'm, it's not working. Or it's not working like I know it should be working. Or it's not bringing me the fulfillment because I know there's something missing. I'm going for fish when, and the blessing when really it's all about being partnered with the blesser. Would you say, God, I want to do whatever you tell me to do. Through your word through your spoken word, whatever, however you want to cl- give me clarity of what you want me to do, I'm going to do it. I won't argue. I won't procrastinate. Would you say, God, I want to do, I want to follow you, and I want to um, do whatever you ask me to do. And then would you say, God, I want to, I, I'm going to be expectant. I want to have faith. I know that's an important part. It's impossible to please you without faith in my heart. And so God, would you say, God, Put faith in my life. If you've never asked Christ into your life, that is important. That is really the first step where you say, dear God, I want to follow you. I want to be a disciple. I want to follow you. Speak to me. Guide me. Would you say, God, today I lift my hand up, say, yes, I want to be a follower of Christ. Maybe you're just lifting your hand up in your heart, but you're saying, today, this is my day. Forgive me, God. Give me a fresh start, and I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed with me, let me know about that. If you're on Vineyard Live, that's an easy way for you to do it. There's a hand that's raised up that says, I, I prayed to receive Christ today. Uh, the other way is, is to text us. Let us know at 704-5504 and text No God. That way we can, uh, I can personally pray for you. I'd love to hear from you. We want you to know about your next step. We want to help you in your journey as you're following Christ. You can also let us know about any prayer requests that you have by typing in pray. Same number. We would uh, 
uh, love to reach out to you and pray with anything that you have need of. Also, here's a way that you can give uh, if you'd like to help with uh, the nets that we uh, have here at the church because we're all about fishing for people here. And uh, when you give, you help uh, with the nets. And nets meaning our kids' ministry, our mailers that we do, the uh, emphasis that goes into doing our online service, all the various ministries. Those are our nets to help us gather people up and win souls for Christ. Thank you for giving. Thank you for being part of this amazing uh, time in our country and the series that we've been able to do about talking about, hey, let's have a great comeback. And God is all about comebacks. And I can't wait to see you come back next week when we uh, have a special message that will be a pre-election message. You won't want to miss this. It is an important part of preparing your heart and your mind for whatever outcome happens uh, at, the, uh, at the election that's going to be on November 3rd. So uh, bless you and can't wait to see you next week. Bye.